Today, I'm going to build a machine that destroys withers, build a new type of beacon, and get unlimited wither roses. But first, I need to fix something, because it turns out I've been murdering a lot of dolphins. As you guys have informed me that dolphins need air to breathe. I must have killed about four dolphins last episode. Oh, well, <laughs> we all make mistakes. But this should now be a much safer place. Let's buy a few name tags from this guy. Grab a bunch of leads. Let's grab this dolphin. And hopefully I will never murder a dolphin again. A few moments later. Are you kidding me? As I was saying, hopefully I don't murder any more dolphins. And welcome, Grace, to your new home. Let's name tag you as well. Now, in theory, you should never die again. Look at that. You can get air. <laughs> if she disappears now, then I have no idea what to do. And here we have the unhatchable turtle eggs. Might as well breed some more. And now we have two more eggs that can hatch. This place will be thriving in 6,000 years when they eventually crack. I'm also going to slightly change the redstone of this farm. So instead, I have redstone next to the pistons and then blocks along the top. And that's just a way to make it a bit more efficient. It looks like this is completely overflowed with iron. But I think it'd be a good idea to turn it all into blocks. And then I can plant saplings and keep bone meal in them. And then get lots and lots of wood. Wow, that is a lot of wood. Now I can craft lots of chests. And from that, lots of hoppers. And next, I'm going to start digging a tunnel, which thanks to haste is very, very fast. And now this tunnel completely connects to my house. So I'm just going to have hoppers coming all the way along here. And now this is all connected up. Let's block that back up. And that is a job well done. And then right here, some chests can be placed and it's working. <laughs> The items are filtering through. And we have here enough space for 10 double chests. All I need to do now is to make some ladders. I randomly discovered this chest plate in a chest. And you know what? <laughs> That's been thrown away. Gotta remember, guys. Diamond armor is for peasants. And my dolphin is still alive. <laughs> that is a miracle. Now, the next thing I'd like to get is another conduit because I no longer have one in here. And that's because I put it down here so I could get the conduit effect. So I could swim around killing drowns like a peasant, or I could just chill at the top of my drowned farm and get them that way. A few days have passed. Let's see how many we've got. Somehow a few creepers have been spawning as well. Might as well take them out. But this is the main attraction. All these drowns. Whilst I'm here, I'm also going to make some trap doors and place them along the top of here so that I can get all the XP. And from all of that, we got one Nautilus shell. <laughs> this is going really well. I know that it is possible to get them through fishing, but I don't want to put you guys through that. There's a very easy way to get Wither Roses, which involves killing a load of chickens. But I feel bad killing all those chickens, so I'm going to do it a different way. So to start off with, I'm going to need to gather up a load of materials. I have here all the items I need, except for two more Wither Skulls, and I also need eggs. I'm not killing any chickens, but <laughs> we need some bait. Also, what the the heck are you guys doing on top of this map? What is this? Some sort of secret me You guys, just get down from there. Come on. That's it. Why do I feel like someone's going to die from this? Yep, yeah, he died. Um, the, uh, the one lived, one died. <laughs> My bad. Unfortunately, eggs are a pretty difficult thing to get. This guy's already laid one very nicely, but... <laughs> Just gonna have to wait. Apparently they lay an egg every five to ten minutes. <laughs> I'm not waiting for another one. If I just fly near to every chicken I see, apparently they've got an egg waiting for me. Look at this. Yeah, a third one. <laughs> one over here that you just laid. Brilliant. This is working amazingly. In an ingenious move, I have gathered up a load of chickens. Now we can just put them into a hole and the eggs will soon be rolling in. Or else there's literally millions of chickens in this area. This spot right here will forever be known as the hole of chickens. And already we're up to 10 eggs. I now have 16 eggs, let's get out of here. I now have all the needed items except for one thing, and that is wither skulls. Quite a few skeletons have been taken out. Let's have a look how many wither skulls. We've got six. Well, we only need two more, so we can leave those ones there. And with that, we have all the items that we need. Look what I've just flown past, guys. <laughs> that brings back bad memories. And now we can head through this portal to the stronghold. Because the only way to build this farm is in the end. I was looking for a good end gateway portal. I have found one to do it. And I've also found an end city, so... <laughs> It's pretty cool. The only useful thing worth taking is probably the elytra. And to be honest, that end gateway is probably too near to the end city, so it just caused me problems. After a bit of searching, I have found a gateway in the perfect spot. So the first thing I'm going to do is add some dirt along the top here and some more along the bottom. Place a mushroom here and we're going to basically destroy the portal bit when this mushroom eventually grows. There we go. It eventually grew. <laughs> I was starting to worry that it, it, it wouldn't. I only had 12 bone meal left, but now... If we get rid of all this, we can see that the portal block has gone. And we're building a spot right here, which is where the chicken will live. Now, at least one of these 16 eggs has to be a chicken. All right, already we've used a lot up and... There we go, we got one. Can we get him a buddy? A little friend? No, it, it's just you on your own, mate. And I'd like to give him a name, so we're going to name him... How am I alive? Because the poor fella is going to have a wither shooting at him. And on this side, we're going to build a giant pipe that goes up 44 blocks. What do you reckon? Can I land this MLG, guys? Yes, I can. Also, guys, you may have noticed, but we are getting so, so close to 2 million subscribers. So please, 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 if you enjoy my videos, 
press the subscribe button. And now we can build the Enderman spawning platform. And now I get the very fun job of filling in all of these blocks. And now this platform is completed. We're going to come over here, add a shape like this, and mine out these bottom blocks. And we're basically creating the place that the Endermite is going to go. So double carpet on top of here to stop Enderman spawning. And then we can place a rail and start trying to spawn in an Endermite. And eventually, okay, we managed to get one. Let's, okay, I don't want him to die. Hold on, hold on. Uh, let's fly out of here, SP. Yeah, I don't want him to die. A lot of mobs have died because of my thorns. But now I can place a minecart and move it. There we go. He's in there. Perfect. And all this round here can now be broken. I quite like the way that he's just balancing on that, that little iron bar. And the trapdoor is going to go there and finally there. And now from here, I'm going to build up 84 blocks, which is thankfully very easy with scaffolding. And then I can climb my way to the top and build a nice little glass platform. And just look at all the endermen getting angry and falling down. And this part is very satisfying. I can break all the scaffolding and... <laughs> Just look at it disappear. Next, I'm going to add some carpet on top of this bedrock to stop Enderman spawning. I'm also going to make my storage system a little bit bigger. That looks like a storage system to be proud of. We're also going to put another enchantment table right there and block that in. And under the bedrock, we're going to place that with a wall underneath. And now comes the part that is kind of exciting, but also kind of terrifying. I need to place these three wither skulls. And then before the explosion happens, okay, I need to place water right there. Okay, we're all right. Um, hopefully this explosion doesn't now kill me, but it should be okay. There we go, the explosion's happened. Alright, now I've got to get rid of that water. Oh my goodness, what's going on here? I'm down to one heart. All the endermen were chasing after me. I, I don't know why. Maybe because I spawned the wither. Let's once again try and get rid of this water. There we go, we got it. And now if we break this block right here, it's going to try and start shooting the chickens. And it's going to be taking out the endermen. Although something has gone wrong because my enchantment table and hopper has disappeared. Should be a hopper right there. Because at the moment, the endermen are dying when they land. But instead, they need an enchantment table to land on. Oh, hold on, never mind. It did drop. Okay, we're back in business. Enchantment table there. Netherrack there. I'm pretty sure it should be working now. It's so funny watching loads and loads of endermen spawn and then all fall down. And the endermen are getting taken out. And with the roses are going in. And it's also free enderpearls. And now I can head to the top chill up here and get loads and loads of wither roses. It's been quite some time. Let's see how much we've got. Are you ready for this, guys? This is way more stuff than I thought we were going to get. Oh my goodness, we have loads of wither roses. Might as well get fill in a shulker box. And whilst this has given me loads of ender pills, I might as well leave them here because I don't really have a use for them. And next, I can show you the use for all these wither roses. And that is to instead change these to be netherrack and then place wither roses along here so that only wither skeletons can spawn in the wither skeleton farm. It'll just make it more efficient since it'll stop blaze and pigmen from spawning. And now you can probably see why I needed so many wither roses, but it is now done. If I go ahead and swoop down here, almost just landed in lava, it should now make this wither skeleton farm even more efficient. And now they really are starting to fall quite fast. It's also an excellent way to get blaze rods. And I might as well bring all these wither skeleton skulls back home. Since this sugarcane farm is a little bit too slow for my liking, we're going to make a few changes to the design. Well, actually, all I'm going to do is just make it a bit bigger. Now, unfortunately, in wanting to extend this, we are going to clash a little bit with the turtle enclosure, so you guys sit tight. Things are just going to get a little bit messy. Probably going to be safer if I actually move these eggs. We'll just move them to there. Nothing will go wrong. And this is why building with sand is extremely annoying. These poor, poor turtles. What a mess this has made. Thankfully, there was always glowstone under any carpet, so we didn't break any of those. Now, it's probably a good idea for me to head to the nether. Then I can go to my bartering farm and grab a load of quartz. And I think with all that, I've got five stacks. That should be enough. And as a bonus point, I've actually got six stacks. I just can't actually count that high. Are you kidding me? Why is a creeper spawned down here? Of all places, okay? If he blows up, I, <laughs> it would have been a disaster. So because I want to be able to come down here and see the minecart, but I also want water up here, my plan is to place slabs along here so I can still go underneath and look by crouching, but the water won't flow down and make a mess down there. Didn't realize this was going to happen. We've actually dug out into the cave. I'm going to have to make a bit of a border here before the spiders get me. And now I've finished doing these walls, I'm going to add some water along the bottom of here. And I'll have all the required materials to fully upgrade this farm. Finally, we're going to add pistons along here, plant more sugarcane, add in a glass wall to stop the sugarcane, and finally, I can extend the minecart system. And it is now complete. Hopefully it gets me sugarcane much, much faster. Next, I'm going to grab some sponge, lots and lots of gravel, and then I can continue my project of draining an entire ocean monument. So my plan is to corner off areas like this, and then to place sponge around to 
drain it all out. But it has to be kind of quick if the area is big. Maybe if I just go like this, it'll work. Note to self, make the area smaller next time you do this. And the best way for me to dry the sponge is to build a portal to the nether. Somehow I've ended up in my own drowned farm. That's not exactly ideal. But all we have to do now is just keep placing these. And if we do something like this, we'll just keep drying them fast. I think it's in my best interest to make this section a little less wide. Hopefully this now makes things a lot easier. Yeah, I would say so. This has definitely helped. And there we have it. The first section has been drained. Now I'd better get to work on draining the rest of this monument. It could take a while. One eternity later. This is a way bigger project than I thought it was going to be. I have spent hours and hours, <laughs> and this is as much as I've managed to drain. I've still got all of this to go. So I'm going to spend the rest of today placing gravel, and then I'm going to spend my time doing something else. I think I'm going to add something to this village. And that's going to be an automatic carrot and potato farm. And I think in order to build it, I'm going to need a little bit more glass, which means I'm heading to the desert. And my plan is to completely fill both of these shulker boxes with sand. I have now filled up both of these shulker boxes and filled my inventory as well. Do you mind interrupting me, stupid skeleton? I will save a lot of this sand to make TNT, which will then be used to go hunting for netherite. So I've already put the walls down for where I'm going to build it. As you can see, there is a tree in the way. And I could probably do with getting some dirt and filling in these holes. I'm also going to grab some iron from my supply down here, and then craft more iron blocks. And I'm thinking that it could be a good idea to put iron underneath the glass. This area is looking a lot nicer now. I'm going to add glowstone under the water holes here. So there's also going to be some around here. And this is just to make sure that the water doesn't freeze. Just the problems of living in a snowy biome. Then I can fill all of these in with water and put carpet on top of those. And then finally a composter in the middle. And here we're going to add the glowstone. I'm going to place a bed. This is this was my bed, but now it's part of the build and we'll put iron blocks on top of that. Let's place a rail right here with a hopper minecart there. Then we can break the rail. Just realized I need to place a hopper here first. And when we break this, they're on top of each other. We'll put a trapdoor on top of that. And right here, we're going to put an area for where a village is going to be. And <laughs> no, it's not going to be you. Well, if he really wants to go in there, well, now you're trapped. Since these villagers are already raring to go, let's get till in the ground. And this has made me realize that I don't have any normal carrots anywhere. Looks like we're going on a journey to find some. Here's something interesting I've discovered. Fairly near my house, there is actually a swamp hut. Shipwrecks may be a good place to find carrots, but <laughs> everything but basically. Searched a few shipwrecks and no joy. However... This village surely has some carrots. Come on, farmer, don't let me down. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, you can have these seeds, they're no use to me. And look at this, a shipwreck, like, half lodged into the village. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. What is this? And what does it have in the chest? Potatoes, well, we don't really need those. But I'm very pleased to say there's a few more carrots. I think the best option for me to get more carrots is just to keep bone mealing them and getting loads and loads. And there we go. This entire place is now filled with carrots. I'm also going to dig a tunnel that goes down here. And I'm going to have chests under the hoppers and it's all going to feed nicely down here. I think I'm going to make this entire place to be iron blocks. And so this will be the chest room. And I'm actually curious to see if this villager will go to that job site block over there. Looks like the answer is no. So instead, we're going to make him into a chef since I don't have a villager with that job just yet. Are you kidding me? A random different villager has come over and taken it. What is this all about? You know, let's test someone. Let's see. Do you, do you want to be in here? Do you want to be a farmer? You know, we can make you into a farmer, good sir. That's not a problem. That's it. You stay over there now. You are now officially a farmer. In fact, let's lock him in. If I give him a single emerald. There we go. You're a farmer for life now. Now I've just got to redo this bit. And there we go. Good as new. Oh my goodness. You've walked in here now as well. Now there's, there's just too many villagers here. You can go in a boat. You can go in a boat. Okay. You could just get out of here. No, you want to be in here as well. That's just causing more complications, but we'll deal with it. Somehow I've got this to work. This guy is working away. If I now put this here, okay, he's not going to move that. That's all sorted. This guy's farming. Okay, let's uh, let's trade with you. Let's look. You need wool to look. Why did I pick that trade of all of them? Change your plan, good sir, because I cannot be bothered to get all that wool. You are instead going to have a smithing table here. Oh my goodness. I don't know where you came from, but you've taken it. I'm having to surround him in smithing tables, but he's finally accepted that. I'm going to buy a stone hoe, which is, is pretty useless. Let's chuck it over there. Alrighty, we can now get rid of these because they kind of look a little bit in the way. So now, in theory, and, and I mean in theory, this should be finished and should work. I'm also completely out of firework rockets. So this is a good opportunity to see how the new and improved sugarcane farm is doing. A couple of stacks, I'm happy with that. I now have a load more firework rockets. Look at this, guys. It's in action. They're talking to each other. Go on, farmer, just do it. Throw him some carrots. Give them to him. Oh my goodness, what just... Are you kidding? I'm sorry, villager. What a disaster. Why did that create... I was my... What just happened? Let's just push another villager in there. Hey, <laughs> you're trapped forever now. Let's repair the fence. And now I just need to fill in all of this. There we go. 
I just caught it in action. I caught him throwing some carrots to that guy, but <laughs> they never got to him. Look at them filtering through. Loads and loads. 26, 27. Brilliant. This farmer trying to be helpful, but little does he know he's just given me 69 carrots. And great news. Grace the dolphin is still alive and well. So my plan with these carrots is to put them in this chest and then use my gold from my gold farm to craft lots and lots of golden carrots. And now that the food situation is sorted, I can start another project, which involves grabbing a few stacks of logs, turning them all into chests, getting a bucket of lava, and heading to the nether. Because I'm currently having a few problems with this machine clogging up. And if any of these chests overflow, then it breaks the whole storage system. So I'm just going to extend it so they have three double chests so that they've got more room to fill up. And I think the best way to do that is drink fire resistance and then place lava so that I can swim downwards. And don't worry, I've got loads of nether bricks right here. I just realised it's a little bit tedious, but I can kind of build this by just looking through the cracks of the chests. The tiniest of gaps, but look at that. I can just about place hoppers next to these chests. Ended up getting a little carried away, and I've added six double chests per one, so... They're definitely not overflowing anymore. And I can just add a nice nether brick border around the outside. I'm going to spend a bit more time getting more wood. And now with lots of extra wood, let's make lots of extra chests. Eventually, I want to get a full shulker box worth of wood, but I need to do a little bit more mining for that. Might as well take these carrots as well. Now I'm going to spend a bit of time doing redstone. Because I'd like to sort the bottles to be separate from everything else using a brewing stand. So this is where I've currently got to. It will all work perfectly. It will sort the bottles into there. All I need to do now is make some system that waits 20 seconds before activating this redstone torch. Because my plan is to turn all the three minute fire resistance potions instantly into eight minute ones by uh, having redstone in here that goes into this brewing stand. I can either place 100 repeaters or I can try and make a hopper clock. So that's what I'm going to do. I know this might sound crazy, but I think I have successfully done it. I suppose all that's left to do now is to test it out with a potion of fire resistance and see what happens. Uh, I don't know if this is this has exactly worked. <laughs> it didn't work. After doing a bit of testing, I believe this piston here needs to be a sticky one. So let's now test it out. That goes into there. Let's see if it goes into the brewing stand. It appears to be brewing right now. This piston did extend. As you can see, these are counting down. So as soon as that has counted down, the redstone block should go backwards. It's gone over there. That's finished brewing. Did it turn off the thing or did it not reach? It didn't reach. Okay, so there needs to be a repeater there. And now it's reached, that has gone out, and into this hopper, we have an 8-minute fire resistance potion. And this all retracted. I'm pretty sure this piston is actually completely pointless, but I'm, I'm going to leave it there anyway because it, it's not doing any harm. And now I want to get some gold so that I can test out the bartering. And now all this gold can be traded to the pigmen. I had to make a few adjustments, but it does seem now that it is working as intended. And now I'm going to spend a bit of time AFKing for gunpowder. Quite a lot of time has passed. Let's get these creepers and collect all the gunpowder. And I have got plenty and plenty of gunpowder now. I can use that later to get ancient debris. And the next machine I'd like to make is a nether star machine. And this is something that will let me get lots of nether stars very quickly. Although before I do that, I'm going to go and get some more shulker shells because I only have like one left. And although I have loads and loads of shulker boxes, they all seem to be in use as well. And just whilst I'm here, I'm going to grab some extra redstone since I put all of mine into the bartering farm. Thankfully, redstone is one of the easiest things to find. And now I have over two stacks that should be enough for me. And look at this on the way back. I've found some diamonds and a little extra redstone that can all safely go into there. And for now, I'll chuck the cobblestone in there as well because that's going to be good for observers. I think I'm now ready for the end. And now I have the fun task of trying to find a new end city. There is one over there, but I don't know if I've been to it. But <laughs> based on that bridge, I'm going to guess I have. End city spotted. And this one is completely untouched. And there's my first shulker shell. I'm not going to bother taking the loot or the elytra because <laughs> I've already got plenty. And look at that. Another end city is over there. Well, progress is going nicely. I've taken out loads of shulkers. I mean, how many have we got now? 14. That's really good. And I think once I've taken out all these guys, I'm heading back to the overworld. And this is a very easy way to get more ender chests. I would like to visit that end city sometime, but I don't want to waste loads and loads of time in the end. Let's crack on with other stuff. Now let's make a couple more shulker boxes. Then I can start collecting resources for the next build. And I'll have all the resources for this. The only thing I need is 25 minecarts. And my iron farm has been working nicely in the background, but I did end up using all my iron on this build. So I can either steal some from here or take the easier option and steal it from a beacon. Now I can craft all of the minecarts, chuck them in a shulker box, and then I can get building in the end. And now I've got to dig out a massive area below the end portal. It may not look like that big of a room, but <laughs> it, look how much end stone it is. This took a while to uh, to chisel out. This shall now be known as the endstone chest. I've just realised I also need to mine out 
out this layer as well. Now that I've mined out that layer, I've got to fill in this roof, which unfortunately also means mining away this chest. So I've <laughs> got to put them all back in now. And now I can finally start building this. And now I can grab all of these mine carts and add them here. And this is going to be what damages the wither. And now I can remove the rail and they're all sitting there ready. And now we can add the part that will summon the wither. I have to say, the redstone's really starting to come together. And now the farm is completely finished. I just need to go and get wither skulls and soul sand. And the best place for me to get soul sand is my bartering farm. And the skulls can be gathered at the wither skeleton farm. This farm is starting to overflow with bones, so I think I'm going to turn them all into bone blocks. When I started converting them all into bone blocks, I didn't think I'd be completely overrun with them. And from that AFK in time, I also got 33 wither skulls. And so now I put my wither skulls into these dispensers, fill this chest with soul sand, and if I place four pieces of soul sand, press this button to activate the machine and spawn in the first wither. As you can see, it's giving me four pieces of soul sand again. And we should be moving back and forth. And if I just hold right click the whole time, it's going to keep spawning in new withers whenever one dies. As you can see, this wither is dying extremely, extremely fast. And there we go. That one's been taken down and another one's been spawned and it's automatically placed the soul sand for me as well. If I press F3T whilst holding right click, now it'll do it for me completely hands free. And now all the wither skulls have been used up. We can turn that off and collect my 11 nether stars. Let's dye this shulker box white and put all these bones in the bone barrel. The spare nether stars can go into this shulker box. And now I've got a bunch of redstone items and I want to head back to the wither skull farm. I'd like to create a system that disposes of all the bones and also of all these swords. So I think the best way to do this is have the hoppers all funnel into this chest so both the bones and the swords are there. Now this is going to get a little bit messy but I'm going to break all of these and then uh, probably chuck a load of these swords into the lava. And now if I drink some fire resistance I can place a dispenser facing downwards so that will fire items into the lava. And then this little circuit here will detect if there's something in and keep dispensing things out. And as you can see all the bones are disappearing. I can put the swords in there as well and they'll also disappear. And now I don't really have to worry about anything overflowing other than possibly the coal but that's really easy to turn into coal blocks. I'm now very happy with that. Let's head back home. And now I think it's time to get more ancient debris for this beacon. So I'm going to wait up here a bit and get more gunpowder. Enough time has passed. Let's go and collect the gunpowder. And on my way, I'm also going to remember to bring sand. And now all these creepers are ready to be taken out. And now with all this gunpowder, I can start crafting the TNT. And now I'm going to need to go and get a load more sand because I've run out, but still have lots of gunpowder remaining. Time to destroy more of this desert. And I have now filled up four entire shulker boxes. And then I can get back to crafting TNT. And that is almost two shulker boxes full of TNT. And now I can begin the hunt for ancient debris. And as I blow up the TNT, it's pretty easy to find. It took me quite some time, but I've blown up the last of the TNT, I'm going to see how much ancient debris is left. Never mind, I've been scammed. This TNT that hasn't blown up. But I'll grab this ancient debris first. Also, guys, make sure to ring the bell. I don't know if many people have ring the bell on my channel, but then you get notifications and you won't miss 900 days, which is coming out next Saturday. And here is the final piece of ancient debris, which gives me a grand total of just under three stacks. That's not half bad, if you ask me. Oh, look at that. Just on my way back. <laughs> Stumbled across a bit more ancient debris. Also, whilst I've got the F3 open, for those of you that doubt whether I actually do the days legitimately, you can see there on the left that it does indeed say day 797. And now I desperately need to repair my pickaxe. So I will do that at the gold farm. Now I have a plan for all this ancient debris. I'm going to place it down and make an ancient debris beacon, which I will one day turn into a netherite beacon when I get enough ancient debris. But whilst I wait to reach that point, it'll be nice to have something here instead. Can't believe I've managed to get 14 blocks of netherite. That is quite a crazy amount still. And I might as well hide these extra five pieces underneath because they're just going to look out of place. There we go. This is my uh, ancient debris beacon. And if I take one of these beacons out of this shulker box, I can place it on top and it will activate. And next I should head to my brewing room, grab a load of string, then I can cover this so that snow doesn't get in the way of it. The rest of this ancient debris can be smelted. And thankfully, I've got loads of coal because these furnaces need filling up again. Since I do still have quite a lot of gravel left, I'm going to head over to the monument and start placing more. I'm going to need way more than a thousand days to finish this project, aren't I? And I've also got to finish the netherite beacon. I'll be going to 10,000 days at this rate. And now another wall has been completed. Completed. And now I just need to split it up. It might be dark, but I'm working through the night. I also need to dry all of this sponge and then I can start drying this up. And this bit is very satisfying. Just pl placing the torch and then watching the gravel fall down and break. Well, the other way to quickly break it is to just go like this. And you can see it's pretty fast. I think I've worked out the most efficient method. Have the sponge in my offhand and then break it as soon as I place it. And then by the time I get to the bottom, all the sponge is already broken. And there we go. I've managed to drain all of these sections. And the sun has gone down. It is now night time. So that, ladies and gentlemen, was 800 days in hardcore Minecraft.